Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland This is going to be another Let Me Bore You to Sleep I've done a few of these, I think this is number 37 and I just never get bored of doing them I just, it's weird isn't it so just to let you know before we start only listen to this boring session where you can safely close your eyes (sighs) and also to let you know that Andre is on the prowl He's just ran underneath my chair, so I'm not quite sure what he's up to. But about a minute ago, he was scratching at something, making a bit of noise, so... There's a chance there may be some background sounds. Also, I've got all my windows open. Because... It's rather warm at the moment Uh, I'm not sure what the date is but it's about 23rd 24th of July something like that I'm losing track of the days but it is a Tuesday and um, yeah that's it really So I thought I'd bore you with a story. A nice summer evening story. Some of it may be true, some of it may be made up. I really don't know yet because I have no idea what I'm gonna say. So ideally, as I crack the crack my toes it was weird the way they crack um, I'm quite tired I might try and have an early night tonight I'd like to maybe get in bed by four three or four maybe even earlier and hopefully I won't be yawning through the entirety of this recording so probably the best way to listen to this apart from with your ears is to maybe get yourself comfortable in a chair or on a bed or you know somewhere where you can safely drift off into a boring slumber that's what I would say just get yourself prepared and what you may notice as time goes by not necessarily just with this particular individual session but also the more you listen to me the more of these let me bore you to sleep sessions that you listen to the quicker you may find that you actually drift off to sleep so you may have been listening to the last three or four for example and already you may find yourself just feeling incredibly tired as if my voice is some kind of a trigger to let go and to relax your body and your mind completely (sighs) 
Oh, you might, you might just enjoy. <sighs> you may enjoy the feeling of just listening to my voice and being bored. I mean, maybe there's a there may be in like an ASMR tingling connection with listening to me talking about nothing for however long I talk for. Although usually they last about an hour, roughly. Oh, well, this is the most I've yawned in ages when making recordings such as this, such as these. Now I'm sniffing, that's nice, isn't it? What a lovely, lovely sound. Nothing nicer than hearing someone pull back the snot back into their nose. Oh, it's lovely, isn't it? Mm. So, what shall I tell you about? Oh, I could tell you about my karate. Let me tell you about the first time I went to or should I do that or should I do yeah I'll tell you about that so when I was about 13 I was at school with my friend and I didn't if I'm honest, I didn't pay much attention to the actual schoolwork to the extent that I really didn't do anything. It was always bare minimum um, because nothing really at school interested me. None of the, none of the subjects really, perhaps religion, religious studies did or RE we used to call it religious education I was kind of interested in that as I suppose if I'd have studied philosophy or psychology I would have been interested in that as well but we didn't at my school uh, as far as social sciences go or sciences it was more chemistry and uh, biology and you know that kind of stuff it's like the the base the base subjects you know, like history geography um, maths of course English just those general subjects and Every year that I started in high school, every year in the you know, we know when the new year was coming up in September, I always had this little bit of positivity and determination to this year give it a go. It was a little bit like eating like the, the hottest curry you know something that I'd eaten it and I'd forgotten tried it before didn't like it couldn't couldn't eat it had to avoid it and then the next year I forgot how much I disliked it and I thought I'd give it a go again I'll have a little taste and then I found we was reminded very quickly that I didn't like it. Or another analogy would be maybe giving birth. Not that I've done that very often, but you know, the the body and the the mind is quite good at allowing people to forget any of the suffering that went on and to remember the pleasure, you know, the pleasure of holding that baby 
you know, for the first time or whatever uh, happens there. So going to school is very much like having given birth and forgotten about the pain and going to give birth again and being reminded, oh, this is why I decided never to have another, any more kids and here I am again. This is why I decided never to let my husband go anywhere near me again. But I forgot. And here we are. Not a good analogy, but I'm trying to think of any other analogies that would be similar. I suppose... I suppose it'd be like stepping on the... <laughs> no, any I oh well, my analogies about going to school seem quite painful. It was not I didn't enjoy being at school, to be fair. But that's not what this is about. This session is not about that. It's not a therapy session for me. Um I was a bit naughty at school. I played up and I just messed about pretty much the whole time and that's all I did, I didn't learn, I, I must have learned how to read and write and basic maths and you know just general stuff, general knowledge I gained and also how much of that was gained from television and you know reading papers and reading magazines and conversations and stuff I don't know but Clearly I must have learned something at school because I was there for a long time. Now high school I was five years, five whole years. That's a long time. So when I was 13, I think I was sitting in the science room, the science lab and I think I was supposed to be doing something and I, I didn't um, I, you know I don't know what kind of some experiment I mean in all fairness the teacher generally kept me away from the Bunsen burners after a couple of incidents so yeah that's a good example touching I don't know if anyone if you're old I don't know if if you're old enough, if if you still have Bunsen burners at school, and you know the tripods, they used to be the tri the Bunsen burner would be underneath the tripod, and there'd be a metal dish or whatever uh, on top. The amount of times I forget that the tripod would still be hot. And the amount of times I've burned myself that's a little bit like the beginning of uh, each year you know I was very optimistic about holding that and grasping that tripod giving it a good go you know a good hold as I was with school you know I used to go in there and the first day of school and I had pencils and pens and you know, I'd I'd be all you know quite I don't know, positive, quite excited, and didn't last long. It's like oh, the Bunsen burner's hot. Forgot that. Anyway, I'm in the science lab with my friend, and we were just talking. That's all I really did when I was at school I did a lot of talking just chatted and he started talking about his brother I said what he said uh, his brother's doing karate at the other high school because there's two high schools in my town where I lived and he said that he was going there to see what it was like he wasn't going to actually participate but he was going to 
go and watch his brother and you know maybe may, you know maybe join and I said can I come along with you and he said yeah so I went along and I remember going in there for the first time it's a much bigger school than the one that I was going to um, probably the same size gym because most of the gyms at schools generally the same size and that's based on the two gyms that I've ever seen so that might not be right it was kind of the same size gym they might have had more though more gyms than just one we had one by gym I mean I mean the person I mean gymnasium and they call isn't is it Germany gymnasium isn't that a school though an actual school like an education Andre's so hot he can't get comfortable because it's because of the heat I thought about shaving him no, nothing to do with him being hot I just thought it would be funny take a few funny pictures maybe dye his hair pink and green and blue anyway the um, I remember going to the gym to the, to the school went in there with my friend and I'm not sure if I met him there or if I knocked on his door and we walked up I really don't remember we may have gone up in a car because maybe he's he got a lift with his brother and I don't remember anyway we were there and the I don't know how many people were in the class there was probably what one two three four well, probably at least sixteen to twenty people I'd say maybe less but you know about that and they were all young mainly apart from a couple of adults and then but the ages of the young people varied so from being 13 12 13 up to you know like school leaving age like 16 17 18 and then there was a couple of adults a few probably about three or four adults there including the instructor who is this really big tall muscly man who's big and he was uh, really good as well he was the local champion the local karate champion he used to do competitions and stuff like that contests and win he used to win so I went along and me and my friend sat on the side on some I always remember it because there was these long wooden benches the types that you have in gymnasiums and there was lots of them but they were all stacked up to one side of the gym and we just sat on them I don't recall whether there was anybody else there watching I think we might have been the only ones so the instructor came over and said hello to us and said we were welcome to watch and then, which is what we did and I think what surprised me is the noise because there's a lot of shouting a lot of that uh, I'm not going to shout now because that wouldn't really be very good for those that sort have of nodded off but there's a lot of shouting and a lot of oi ai and also Korean words, Korean words were being used. Uh, 
don't know why I said Korean twice, but so I, kind of there's a different language to what I was used to, and I don't think I ever really got the hang of it. I just it just became second nature, I suppose. But at that point, I thought, oh, because you know I've been sitting quite uncomfortably on the chair, and one of my buttocks had gone a bit numb. So it was quite good. I quite liked it. The age group were quite good because there was a few people mainly older than me. But there was a few that were kind of similar age. And I think what was interesting is the the like the toughest kid in one of the toughest kids in the school was there as well and he was just starting so that was interesting to see but he he dropped out he didn't stay after that lesson I don't think and the lessons were on Tuesdays and Thursday evenings from I don't know, 7 to 9 or something like that so I went along I, you know I was sitting there and I thought, yeah, I'll give this a go. Because I always wanted to do martial arts from a very, very early age. I'll give you an example. Um, when, okay, when I moved out of the children's home and went and lived with my dad and his wife, Initially, we'd moved in, we had this little town. Initially, we lived with him and his mother in law and his wife in a house that wasn't big enough for us all. But, you know, we were only little, so you know, it didn't really matter. But eventually, um, we moved, me, my brothers, and my dad and his wife moved into a council house, which had three bedrooms so I slept in the little room on my own and the other two shared bunk beds I didn't share bunk beds but they had a bunk each in the bigger room and my parents had a, their own room and on the wall of this where my bed was there was a picture of Bruce Lee It was, a, it was a poster from Enter the Dragon. So this was back in 1978. And I'm not sure when Enter the Dragon came out, but it was about, it was around that time, 77, maybe a bit earlier. Maybe it was 78, but so from that age I was always interested in watching martial art films and there used to be a TV show called Monkey that was on um, I don't know if you ever saw it and it was lots of martial arts and but it was silly it was funny and I watched it for years it was it used to, you know, I just absolutely loved it. But it's all, you know, I just loved anything to do with martial arts, that kind of flamboyant jumping around, acrobatic fighting, and stuff like that. And I remember when I was about 10, uh, I did ask my dad if I could go to do karate and he said no um, so I had to wait till I was sort of old enough to just do it on my own you know to pay my own way because I, I, I had a part time job so I just paid it myself but I just I longed to do it for years and here I was sitting on this big bunch of benches, wooden benches with my friend 
watching kind of like a scene out of End of the Dragon where they're, they're all wearing those white suits practicing their punches and it was like wow it's like a movie except instead of being on a tropical island it's inside a school a smelly gym but I didn't judge the smelly gym because I know that I contributed to that smell so it was all, all well and I thought oh I think I'll give this a go I was I was concerned because I didn't feel very confident about just the publicness of it you know being there and being watched and you know didn't didn't appealed to me that side of it but I pushed myself and I, I went there the next lesson so I think it was the next Tuesday evening I went along and I think I probably had a pair of shorts on or tracksuit bottoms and absolutely loved it loved it loved it completely in fact, I'd probably say it's the first thing in my life that the first time I really felt that I'd found a purpose, you know? Kind of really found something that was right for me, something that I should be doing. And the sound of this story you'd think it then I ended up going on and doing karate for the Olympics representing my country but that that didn't happen but I did I did continue for a few years basically till I left school and then I got a full time job and I was working evenings and gradually bit by bit I just stopped going altogether and that was it never went back to the karate although I did do other martial arts and boxing and things later in life but for that period that was it but I, for the time that I did do it I loved it and after probably a couple of weeks the the instructor got me to pay for insurance got me to pay for a, a gi which is the the costume the uniform whatever you want to call it for the karate I got given a white belt and she meant I was a total beginner And I think the first thing I noticed is my toes were hurting because <laughs> I was basically doing a lot of standing on my toes and also doing press ups on my knuckles, which I'd never done before. But I really, I think what it was is because I was spending so much time at school so much of my time during the day not doing anything that I enjoyed so when I did actually find something that I enjoyed doing I kind of gripped it you know I kind of really I grabbed it and made the most of it and I did I practiced and practiced and practiced every day morning, night, I was practicing at school I was sparring with my friend because he, he came back and we were um, doing it together for a while then he, he stopped doing it after a while but I became good friends with his brother that was still doing it and also other people that were there
and it was really good. It was so so enjoyable. Just to feel part of something. Feel. I don't know if I felt accepted, but I did. I kind of did a little bit. Another thing that I really liked about it was the sparring because from day one we were sparring with each other. We'd take turns and do a couple of minutes, three minutes or whatever with each person and then move down the line to the next person. And as I got better at it, I found that I'd be trying not to hurt the person who was maybe more of a beginner and then moving up the ranks and then coming against someone that was perhaps trying not to hurt me. So it was interesting because I'd most of the people were bigger than me because I wasn't very big. They were taller, stronger probably. A lot of them, yeah, so But the one thing they always said that I didn't, I was like this little indestructible machine. It was just couldn't, they just couldn't hurt me. I kept coming back, kept, kept, you know, didn't give up. But I loved it, it was so much fun. And I did a couple of competitions, entered I think two or three. The first competition, I'd had, I just ended up just fighting, like proper just <laughs> fist fighting, not not doing karate. Because I think they went, they punched me. I didn't like it, so I ended up just scrapping, which is we got in trouble for. But I, I like, kind of went out quite early in that round. And the second fight, I, I think I won the first two. And I think the third, or whatever, I got into the quarterfinals or something but I never never got into the final never won but I did win a few a few of the matches which is quite nice I think if I'd have stuck it out I'd have it got better I think that's maybe part of the reason why I've stuck at this at this uh online thing that I do you know being boring and the hypnosis stuff and relaxation sleep hypnotic buffets the whisper stuff whatever it's all, all that kind of stuff that I do I stuck at it for what, 12 and a half years Maybe it's because I, I learned or yeah, I learned that in order to become the best we can be at something I suppose is to just keep doing it. Keep practicing, keep doing it. So I think being boring is something that I've become quite good at. It's amazing that it's something that I feel quite good about as well. I remember though, you know, with the karate I did, I mean I do, eh, 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 eh. I think I did three or four gradients and I got a first class pass in all of them is a top occasionally I do let people skip a grade if they're so good you know they skip a grade but I never got that uh, one of my friends did but I did get a first class pass in all all my grades and that was quite nice because I'd never got 
a good grade in any subject at school ever I never got told that I was good at something ever until I did the karate and I think with because it's a grading and because to be the top of the class or to be maybe the only person out of the grading to get a first class pass was something that I'd done myself something that I'd accomplished myself not something that has been given to me and something that I'd worked for as well you know, by practicing and practicing and practicing so it's quite I quite enjoyed that never had anyone with me though nobody wanted to come and watch me in the grading never really knew why that was most people had their parents with them I remember that, all these parents at one end of the hall, probably at the bottom, the back of the hall, or the sides, and the graders sitting on tables at the front and calling people up by their belt, you know, by level of belts, and white belts first, then yellows, then oranges, greens, blues browns, black, I, f I think that was the order, kind of lose track a bit, but uh, it felt so nice to to get presented those belts, the, the new belt that I just won, you know, in a sense, earned myself, and that certificate I wish I still had them, but I don't. I don't know what happened to them. So I did, uh, what I did do, probably about 2011, I started doing Taekwondo. I was going to say in my local town, but I'm not going to travel to Japan, am I, to do it? That's, has to be quite local, doesn't it, really? So I did that on a I think that might have been a Tuesday and a Thursday, or a Monday and a Wednesday, I forget. But this time I found it more difficult because of the kicking. I've always been able to punch, always found that easy. Um, it's the kicking. I, I don't have the flexibility that I once did, but many, not many people do, I don't think, you know. At 13, I was a lot more suppler, a lot more flexible physically than at 41 when I started doing Taekwondo. Nevertheless, I went on and did, I think, four gradings and got a first class pass in all of them. So, I still did okay. Unfortunately, I had to stop doing it because of my back. I had a uh, just had a, a back thing going on. Also did Wing Chun Kung Fu. Sounds like a meal, doesn't it? Wing Chun Kung Fu. Two portions. So I did that for about a year in 2004 so I was 34 at the time no I was 33 actually 
33 and I did that and now it's good again is uh, used to do I used to go about three times a week and I lost quite a bit of weight got fairly toned which was nice and uh, I was a vegetarian as well at the time but used to do like standard Wing Chun, then we do Chi Kung Do. And then on a, I think it was a Thursday night, or Friday night, no, a Friday night, we used to have a thing called Leg Spa. And that's all it was. It was nothing, you didn't do anything with your hands, it was all legs, including blocking blocking the legs with your feet, stopping the other person and even then I was fairly flexible. So that was good. So I enjoyed that. Learned quite a bit from there actually. And then in two thousand and I think it might be in 2009 I did boxing for about a year and I went there I think that was on a Monday and a Wednesday night and that was good there was a lot of kids there but there were some adults and it definitely helped I did lose some weight doing that and I used to sweat so much Honestly, I was just so sweaty. You just can't even. Yeah, it was embarrassing at times. But I was so. I just loved it. it was so. It's like every bit of energy was just gone at the end of it. I just used up everything. So I've done a few little things and I kept going, you know, but it's been gaps between. It's just that, I was going to say that first bit when I did the karate, although that wasn't the first thing I did because I did kickboxing previous to that a few times with one of the neighbours. But I, uh, decided to just stick to the karate this I don't know I just liked it I liked the instructor I liked the club it became my life for a few years it was I suppose it gave me some discipline as well through my teenage years you know kept me fit I used to go jogging regularly I had a like a gym at the bottom of the garden. I had two punch bags, one light one and one heavy one. I had weights, um, and I'd practice in the garden, the kicking, all that stuff. So I'd be doing that every day for hours sometimes. It was the only thing that I was interested in. I kind of wish that I'd got interested in hypnosis back then. Imagine what kind of life I might have had. If I'd got interested in hypnosis, maybe become a therapist or, you know, and done that as a career. Because the internet didn't really come around until the late 90s. I left school in 86. So it was a good 13 years or 12 years. Of working. Before the internet arrived. And even then it was. It was touch and go really with the internet. I think it wasn't. 
It wasn't fast, it was very slow at the time. Didn't really speed up until about 10 years ago, I'd say. And once broadband came in, and once you no longer had to dial up, although I do miss that little bouncy sound that the internet, um, is it router or what do they used to call it? Anyway, the thing is like binging, it needs to like a little bouncy up and down sound. That's funny. It was, uh, it was, it was kind of, it was back in them days with the internet, it was, what do they say, the window to the world. And just suddenly have access to all this information that was never available before or didn't seem available. Yeah, it would take 10 minutes to upload a picture. It would just take forever. Or upload, download, you know, to show a picture on the screen. Uh, those were the days. I do wonder what things would have been like having the internet when I was a kid. To grow up with the internet. To have all that knowledge available. Just by pressing a few buttons. I reckon it'd be quite cool. I remember back to being young and the first computers coming out. The first home computers. Was it an Atari or a, I can't remember the names of it, but I didn't have anything to do with it. I had no interest in computers. We had them at school, and you could have, you know, and it was the really most basic computers, and I think there was an opportunity to learn a bit about them, but I had no interest, and the teachers and people, the adults were saying, this is the future. You'll have to know how to use a computer in the future. One day everything will be using computers. And I said, no. Really didn't want to know. I actually remember the very first time that my boss at the paper shop, so I had a paper round and he got himself a computer and he got it all set up and he was so excited because he was printing out the the route you know the the addresses of where the papers had to go and he already was doing it anyway but it was apparently it was much easier now because he had the computer and um, I don't know what system he was using previous to that uh, I can't imagine he was typing them out because that would be a lot of work but I just remember hearing the like the printing sometimes we'd be waiting we'd all be waiting there for the list so we'd have the, the papers in our bags but be what you know Still remember the smell of the freshly printed papers, and they'd just be printing out the the addresses for the paper route. 
I realise if you're in America you say route instead of root but that's, we say root here you know what I've, I've been wondering apart from the fact why do I not do something about that squeaky chair why don't I do something some kind of oiling it or something I don't know anyway what I was thinking is I was thinking something has gone out of my head what was it I started thinking about pizza and then my mind went blank it's no weird still can't remember it was something to do with paper rounds mm. wonder how things would have changed or been different if I'd have got involved in computers at an early age I just you know there was something about the idea of spending two hours typing a code into a computer just for a scrolly word that says hello I love Marmite or something like that and to put that much effort just so a word scrolls down the screen didn't really seem like a good way to spend my time so I didn't however if I had <laughs> I might have gotten really into it as it is in 2000 the year 2000 my cousin was really into building websites H, you know with the code HTML actually it was called HTM back then and I kind of caught the bug from him And I, I started getting into it. And once I started I didn't I couldn't stop. And he lost interest. And I continued really, you know, pushing it to a to a not a high level but to the point where it's all I was doing, all I was thinking about for a good year, year and a half. So I was able to build my own websites, which I did for quite a few years. I always built my own websites from scratch with code up to the age, up to 2005 when I started using website builders because it was just easier. That's long before WordPress and those kind of stuff was around. Now I don't even use any of the word, any of the you know the website builders, because I don't have the money to pay for them. So I, now I just use Blogger. Had my website address jasonnewland.com, and it's connected to the Blogger website and that's where I put all my stuff now 
It seems a shame in some ways because I've spent thousands of hours working on my website over the years. The amount of times I've redesigned, the amount of different website builders I've used, I'm talking loads. I've probably used nearly every single website host that there is available at one time. Spent thousands of pounds. I should start singing a song. Maybe I should write a little poem. Called Where Did My Websites Go? Where did my websites go? Like a reindeer urination in the snow, in the falling snow, yeah. So, I'm pretty good with computers now. I'm no expert, but I know my way around. I know my way around the internet, I know my way around a laptop. I can get you know, general things done. I think the good thing with the internet is you can ask. It's always it's always a, a website or something out there that can possibly help how to do video or YouTube or something like that that can help to resolve an issue that I might be having with even the laptop or you know generally and there aren't solutions for everything because so there have been occasions where I've looked and looked and looked and not been able to find anything that's able to help me in that regard for that specific event but usually it's quite good I mean a few times Andre's climbed onto the keyboard of the laptop when I've not been in the room Maybe I've been in the kitchen, or maybe I was washing up, maybe I was cooking, maybe I was staring at a light in the fridge, trying to figure out how it does it stay on when I close the fridge. How does that magic work? Maybe I was in the bathroom. Looking at the toilet, flushing it, trying to figure out how does that magic work? How is how is how? It's amazing. Or maybe I was in the bed, looking at the bed. For no reason other than just looking at it. Thinking Nothing really, just just looking at it, wondering why I'm look why am I looking at the bed? What possible reason could there be to be looking at the bed? Thinking that maybe I was expected to say, wonder how the magic works with that. But what 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 magic? It's a bed. It's nice to have a bed. I've tried sleeping on the floor on a few times, a few occasions in the past. Didn't, well, I don't recommend it. Not, not the best. A nice bed. Oh. See, I've got a double bed. I really, I need a king size bed. I just, I'm greedy. 
I like to really, I like to really spread out. So when I'm laying in bed, I like to wake up and look like I'm just about to start singing the closing song of some operatic masterpiece, you know, arms out wide. mouth wide open, you know. So I suppose it is quite a magical place, isn't it? Beds, a place where you can just fall asleep instantly, a second your head touches a pillow, it can be a trigger kind of to just instantly relax all the muscles of your body and your mind starts to just disappear. And what's weird that even when it's hot weather, you can still get that sense of a breeze on your face that can cool you down. Quite nice. It's quite a nice feeling. But yeah, so sometimes Andre climbs on the keyboard, and what I do is I didn't know what to do when he first did it because I came back into the room and the key, the screen was upside down. I don't mean he'd broken the laptop, I mean the everything was upside down. So I needed to go onto my iPad and Google, you know, how to fix it. And it was easy. I can't remember how to do it, but it was a couple of presses of keys and it undid what he'd done. What I don't understand though, he's done it at least probably three or four times, which means he must have pressed the exact same buttons at the same time each on each occasion. Look how many buttons are on a keyboard. What's the chances of him pressing the exact same buttons at the same time. Yeah, more than three times. Things like that really don't fascinate me at all. I've got no interest. <laughs> I didn't realise how boring it was until just now. I don't care how he did it. It's not interesting. It's not supposed to be interesting. None of this was supposed to be interesting. It's all about just letting go and falling asleep and feeling relaxed. That's all this is about really. So this brings us to the end of yet another fantastic Let Me Bore You To Sleep. Fantastically boring, fantastically long, and that's enough about my feet. I'm going to go. Thank you for listening. Speak to you next time. Lots of love.